Nope. Okay. Uh, we're over John's again for our Saturday visit. And uh, we're going to make some canopies today or try. We're going to explain the process. And we'll see how it goes. Okay, John, you got the floor. All right. Well, here we sit, broken hearted. Hey, Sparky. <sighs> we got two walkers already. Um, what I had going on here was I had an old nobler kit, and I built it, uh, you know, myself without using any of the kit supplies. But I had, I had a canopy in it. And the canopy was all like it was in a smoker's house or something, maybe. And it was all yellowish and everything, and it really looked sort of bad. So I was going to try to use it anyway, thinking, well, maybe that'll just look sort of tinted. And <laughs> I cut it out and put it on the airplane and everything, and it looked like crap. So the fact that I cut it out meant that I couldn't really dye it, because you shouldn't not cut them out if you're going to dye them. Wait until after you dye them to cut them out. They could warp. So I kept mulling it over, mulling it over, and then I said, well, what if I just try to paint it? And me and Sparky had been talking about it for a, a while. And so I took some clear, and I mixed I tinted it with a little bit of black, and I kept adding black, 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 and spraying the inside of this thing until I got tinted a little bit. And then I got it, and I put it on the airplane. And I did this on the inside, by the way, and it looks nice, except... The canopy doesn't look clear. I, I understand it's tinted, yes. But it looks, you know, blurry, like, you know, out of focus lens. Um, so even if it was tinted and the plastic was real clear, then it would look, you know, less blurry as you look through it. So I'm, I said, no, that's not acceptable. I'm working on a pretty nice airplane and I wanted something nice. So then I had another problem. I already had the canopy cut out. Um, and I had nothing to make a mold and I didn't feel like really sitting there carving a piece of wood and sanding it and finish it and everything like that. So I came up with this idea to take some clear cellophane tape and run around the edge of this canopy all the way around and make sort of a dam around the whole thing. It's like, I'm trying to make a mold out of this. So my idea was to put this dam around it and fill it full of a plaster of Paris, which was a total, to me, experiment. Uh, I figured plaster of Paris brittle, it might be porous, it might, you know, leave, uh, you know, imperfections in the plastic. Well, I got this dam all poured, and I poured the plaster of Paris in it and all that, and it came out really nice. And I ended up with this mold, which is, you know, I sanded all these relief angles into it so the plastic could pull off pretty easy. It still pulls off pretty hard, but um, it came out really smooth, really nice. And so I pulled some canopies on it, and, you know, I haven't done this in about 15 years, so I ended up with some mistakes. And the first one, I had a big crease in the front of it where I laid it uh, angled at a corner to corner like this. And I guess it left too much slack in the plastic when it drawed down over it to uh, pull it all out. So not to mention that I had the plastic too hot. And then the second time I pulled one, I turned it around sideways like this and I held it to the back a little bit. Well, that left too much plastic in the front, and it put another crease in it on this side. So there's two pieces of plastic there's, that's down. Then the third time I pulled it, it did all right, but it had hair in it, and it had it had a piece of dirt on it some that got in there somehow. And I had the plastic too hot. And then when you get the plastic too hot, and you I know you can't see this on the video, but it shows up like little teeny bubbles in the plastic, inside of the plastic. You would never be able to sand those out or anything like that. It's just plain too hot. 
And so that we're in that one. Then let's see the fourth one that I did. I still I got a hair in another spot in and two flecks of dirt. Now listen, I'm being meticulous about this. I'm taking a piece of tissue, I'm dusting everything, I'm blowing it all off, I'm blowing the plastic off completely. And <clears throat> Is static electricity or something gets to it and it'll just grow up anything that's even close to it, you know. And so that ruined that one because you, you really can't get those, that out of it. Then I pulled the, the fifth one and it came out pretty nice, although I still had the plastic a little bit too hot. And, and by too hot, I'm not sitting there with a temperature gauge. I set this thing on some blocks in the oven and I watch how much the plastic droops. And you can sit there and watch the plastic and it'll sort of be flat, 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 and then all of a sudden it'll just start going. It'll start sagging and sagging and then it'll stop for a second. And then it'll get hot where it starts a second sag. Like, well, right at that point, I found out is about where you want to stop at. That first sag where it comes down and it, it'll be about It'll be about an inch and a half below this frame, droop in it. And if it gets down here about two and a half inches, then it's too hot. Um, so I found that out the hard way. Well, anyway, so I ended up getting one can, two canopies out of it. And this one's got a few little bubbles in it. But the fifth canopy, sixth canopy that I pulled come out pretty nice. This is more than acceptable. Doesn't have the heat bubbles in it. Doesn't have hairs in it or anything like that does it pretty good but what we're going to do here is since i'm i'm up to snuff on this uh, molding these canopies type thing we'll do a little video here on how i do this you've already seen the mold that i've made and i made it from this piece <clears throat> and this i realized this had plastic built up all the way around it so that this excess would be on here uh, Another thing I also found out that I had to have it up off the board. It doesn't work flat down hard on the board. You have to have it build up off your vacuum box base. So I just cut a couple little pieces of scrap wood and take some duct tape. And we'll show that here in a second. And we'll stick this to this with a piece of duct tape. I guess we can just get that out of the way right now. Well, I really don't under, I really don't know much about locomotives, so but thanks for sharing on the locomotive stuff yesterday. And why no Saturdays Brazil? <laughs> We're just taking this and making a loop out of it and flattening it down. <clears throat> and put it on the piece of wood. Just push it down to it. That just makes sure it doesn't slide around. Now I'll do another piece underneath when I stick it to the vacuum box, which we'll see later. Okay, so I made a frame. Well, let's start with, we, we can start with the plastic. The plastic I get from the hobby shop. And it comes like this. It's about an 18 inch square piece. This is 0.030 uh, gauge plastic. It's got blue protective paper uh, plastic on each side of it. Um, cost about 10 bucks a sheet like this. I'm sure I can get it cheaper if I go to a plastic supply house. Um, uh, you know, I can probably get a four by eight sheet of it for. 50 bucks, you know, and I, you're paying 10 bucks for an 18 inch square piece. Okay, so I, I had some quarter inch cheap plywood from uh, Home Depot laying around, so I figured I, the canopy is no bigger than it is, take about a quarter of one of those sheets to do it. So I made these little frames, um, got little wing nuts and screws. It's just quarter inch plywood. Mm 
Now this frame has to sit tight down on the vacuum box. Um, I've got some, we'll see it when I go upstairs. Every, all that stuff's upstairs in the kitchen. Vacuum box um, too? The vacuum box is up there. Uh, the shop vac's up there. Um, we go up there to actually do the molding. We'll, I bet she loves that. It's nothing. It's really pretty benign. So I made these two frames, and I had them together, and I marked one side of them, outside, outside, and I drilled the holes around the perimeters, and I countersunk these holes so that this piece would sit down hard on the vacuum box and sort of seal down here, and then I obviously drilled all these holes through there and you know, made the two pieces. So then to get the holes for the plastic, I just take the plastic, and I set it down onto the, that one's all right, then I'll, I'll do one, another one. I take this down and I look for an even gap all the way around it, about a quarter inch past the screws, all the way around. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, then I just take a magic marker and I, I can see them screwed and I just run around here and I just mark the screws <clears throat> and then I just get a, a regular old hole punch that you used to use in school uh, paper punch paper punch where'd it go <clears throat> And you can see the hole in the paper punch. So what you do is just take this little black mark that you made on there and center it in that hole, punch it. Run around, do all your holes. And there's probably an easier way. I probably used way too many bolts and stuff in this little frame than what's really truly needed but not having done this a lot or no formal education on how to do it this is my way so it's pretty simple takes a little time to punch these holes which really isn't much Don't follow the Boeing method of pulling a canopy. <laughs> what I'm talking about is the Horton 229 <laughs> canopy. Them guys had no clue what they were doing. When I watched that video, I'm thinking, man, isn't there a modeler there? <laughs> Knows how to pull a canopy? Well, with a little practice, I mean, like I said, I haven't done this in about, oh shoot, 15 years. And it took me about five pulls to pull canopy 15 years ago because <laughs> I hadn't done it for very long. So as you can see, my holes aren't sort of quite right. So just keep turning it around until you get to fall on there. Now you'll peel this plat, this clear this uh, get it ready to go, gonna go up there. plastic off of here make this sure there's no the hair piece. on it yeah well I gotta do that upstairs that's all upstairs stuff let's just use this piece I just got done that's good uh, this stuff, as anybody's ever worked with this stuff knows, it's got static electricity at the yin yang. Well, that's what's holding the blue plastic on. Pretty much. Really don't have to worry about scratching it up around the edges or anything like that, considering that you're not, you're not using that part of the plastic anyway. Is on there. 
got your two alignment marks to make sure your frame goes on square. wonder if there's a way to discharge the static electricity. I was thinking about that, and there probably is. You can probably ground it somehow. Um, I don't put it, this mold that I got is plaster of Paris. Now, I don't put any, it doesn't have anything on it. When I molded it, it was molded against a piece of Lexan plastic, so it's about as smooth as you can be, smoother than probably you could paint it. But it's very delicate, you know. This isn't a lasting mold by all means, but for well, if you wanted to make a lasting mold, it should have been done in Mold Max. Yeah, there's tons of plastic uh, molding materials. They can get sort of costly at times. This is relatively inexpensive. I think the a little box of plaster of Paris cost me about six or seven dollars and I used I used about a cup and a half of plaster and I threw about half that away uh, to make the mold and the mold I poured one night let it cure overnight and I got to looking at it and I'm like well shoot that thing's green it's gonna be green forever so I stuck it in the oven at about 250 degrees and I left it baking there for a whole day. And it cracked. No, it didn't crack. It just dried it out, which was great. Um, I was afraid it would crack because everything was so thick. Um, and I kept worrying, 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 kept checking it all the time. And I, I come back, you know, five hours later and it was still it was just fine. Um, and it dried out real good. And you could tell it changes colors. It went from a gray to a sort of whitish uh, off-white color. And we go up there, we'll, uh, it, it won't, this won't take long. This is really a pretty fast thing. I don't even, I don't preheat the oven or anything like that. I just, I put my blocks and some aluminum foil down in the oven just to make sure that uh, in case this was to get away from me and drip, it's not getting all over inside the oven, it'll land on the foil. You keep uh, getting his ass kicked. Yeah, mama, mama wouldn't like that. This isn't stinky, this doesn't put off really any smell. Um, you're not leaving it in there. In fact, I started out using gloves and now I'm doing it, I don't even put my gloves on because I got this wood frame and I grab it by the wood frame and I set it down on the vacuum box with the wood frame. So I guess now we're sort of ready to go up and uh, give it a shot. I'll step outside real quick and blow this mold up with some air and then I'll, I'll come back into the kitchen. We'll be good to go. You know what? I'm going to fold this stand up or I'll be knocking it around. Yeah, just give us a second and we'll be upstairs. I'm going to head on up and get this blown off. Sorry guys for the for the ride, but we got to navigate the stairs. I got this light stand here. I got to fold it up. Or else I'll be tripping. <laughs> okay, we're ready to head upstairs.
Should have brought my my uh, Osmo. <clears throat> Get some light. As much light as we got. Open up this bottom, would you? I can't get it open one hand. There we go. Oh, here comes my buddy. No, it's too far. Come here, man. You gotta stay out here, okay? We got the oven going and I don't want roast chicken. He thinks I got something to eat. Yeah. Alright. The light. This is all the light we got. This is it. I don't know that one. Um we got here is uh couple blocks these are just metal blocks you could use a piece pieces of two by four very easily you're not it's not, not gonna be in the oven long enough to burn up so <clears throat> see here I got the oven rack about one notch below right centered in it and I just put this piece of aluminum foil down there in case the plastic gets away from me <clears throat> these blocks go on here to where they're going to sit just on this wood frame you really don't want them extended into the into the plastic area just barely catching the wood frame and I sort of balance that on them that's in there ready now i'm gonna get my shop back ready and my vacuum box see i gotta have this over there by you that's where the plug is i want this sort of far away from where i'm at as far away as i can get because it might blow whatever up into the air <clears throat> this is my vacuum box this is nothing more than a piece of pegboard cut about two foot square little one buys one by threes one by fours and a piece of plywood glued on the bottom of it with a hole cut out to fit your shop vac nozzle now this is holes all over on it and I only want to draw a vacuum on this little small frame area so I put a piece of paper over all the other holes and that keeps it from drawing air through those and it only draws air through this. And I put a little bit of felt or foam tape around this to help seal it as it presses down. I probably might be overkill but uh, it's pretty on? basic. No, the stove's not on. <clears throat> turn this oven light on I got this set up in the stove now and I'm gonna to have to shut the door about three-fourths of the way so you might not be able to see this process but right now I'm just gonna stick this on broil I'm put it on broil and I'll shut this door about that much you can still sort of see in there and I'm just gonna wait and I'm gonna watch that plastic It'll take a minute or two. It's not a super fast thing. I guess if you had more of a setup, you could probably do it a little quicker, maybe a little closer. I don't want to put that super close to the heating element, so I'm afraid it'll just bubble the plastic. In fact, it might be better if it was one notch a little lower in the oven, but we'll do it like this. When this, when this hits this point, it's going to go pretty quick. When it gets up to its heated, heated point, it'll go real quick. 
it'll uh, <clears throat> it, it's like super fast because once that plastic starts drooping then it's a matter you turn on the shop back first reach in the oven get your piece of plastic out quick over to the table plunge it down on it and you're done you didn't go closer to the edge no that right there this gap even on these come out pretty good just like that to get closer when you get closer to the edge with your mold then it draws the plastic out thinner and it, it really not a good thing and as you can see I'm sitting here I don't want any dust. It's starting to. Yeah, I see it's starting to wiggle. Get up the heat. It's starting to droop. Here pretty soon it'll start drooping pretty quick. It's, it's moving pretty quick now, isn't it? Not yet. I'll holler at you to turn that shop back on. Okay, we're gonna get noise here, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> Okay, turn it on. Here we go. finished process looks like a pretty nice one I don't see any hairs in it I'll go through here and I'll cut this around the base of this and then I'll cut a split up the back and then we'll pop all that stuff out and I guess we could do that downstairs that's where I've been doing that stuff at like 11 I said, watchers give us a thumbs up guys give us the 11 thumbs up There's no stink. Uh, you smell whatever you cooked last in the oven. <laughs> okay, back downstairs. Let me turn some of these lights there. Can you guys hear us okay? I haven't had any feedback on that. Let me know if you can hear us. Testing, testing, testing. Can you hear us? I can't tell whether we're putting out any sound or not. Yep. Be like an old fashioned movie then. Yeah. There we 
it really works slick for a homemade vacuum box. Yeah. The vacuum box ain't nothing. It's the heating element. And getting your plastic to heat, and a lot of them have a guide. They have four posts, and your heating element's up here, and you slide the plastic up under the heating element, and then it slides straight down onto your mold, onto your vacuum table. That's the only difference between a high dollar one and that, is getting it set up to where it'll seal when you first set it down on there. You, can you guys hear us okay? Give me that pen. Piece of paper. Sounded good. Okay, good. All right. Got... Here we go. We're going to start getting this thing out of here. You got to have extra plastic around these things or it, it just doesn't. When you, when you pull mold on these things, it makes the plastic thinner. And you look at a piece of plastic like I was looking at this point, 030 plastic. Um, thinking that it's it's way too thick and if you look at it out here it is still pretty thick but when you get it off this mold it's about a third thinner than that um, so as you can see by all this rigmarole first you got to make the box and then you got to make the frame and then you got to buy the screws and then you got to buy the plastic and you're going to ruin four or five of them it's a lot cheaper to buy one than it is to make one. They're eight or twelve dollars for a molded canopy. I, I, you can't hardly beat that. I got thirty dollars in plastic. I got fifteen dollars in a box and time, whatever time and all that stuff and to make the frames and it, it's really a labor of love. If you have a difficult canopy that you can't, just can't buy, such as a, like a P forty seven or even this Giski Nobler canopy which they don't haven't made in 50 years you know you have to do it you have to do what you can to make it work oh that's that turned out good though oh it's, got, it's what I was afraid of Got a small stress spot in it from pushing on it. Well, maybe not. Right there. Popping it out of the mold like that. Should have blew it out with air. Yeah, it'll be all right. I can't even see it now. But anyway, that's basically it. Good pair of scissors that probably cut that really good. I won't use them on this. <laughs> you already ruined yours by using them on sandpaper. Yeah. It's still pretty damn sharp. Um, RC car guys use make Lexan bodies all the time, and they sell a little short pair. A scissors that looks they're fingernail scissors it looks sort of like these right here real little ones but they got curved blade on them right you can buy them at the beauty supply shop and that allows you to go around them corners a lot easier than a straight pair of, of scissors does um, 
Go into Walgreens and buy them. But right there, as you can see, it's got a little dust in it. Like I say, this plaster isn't the best uh, medium to be using for your mold, but this one actually came out really nice, and I may end up using this one out of all of them yeah, I, yeah, in the yeah. end. Uh, I don't see any heat bubbles in it. I could tell it turned out perfect when you pushed it down. It, um, if you get them, if you get it too hot, like I say, when it starts sagging in there, and you got your frame in the oven, you're watching that plastic the whole time, and it'll sort of quiver a little bit, and you'll see it, and it'll shrink up first, and then they'll start relaxing, and they'll start drooping, and it'll it'll just sort of go, and. And just a little bit after it does that first initial bloop, which is it, it goes about an inch, maybe a, li maybe a little bit more, it'll droop about an inch below the frame. If you let it droop until it's two inches, you got the plastic too hot and it's going to have bubbles in it. So um, that first droop, and then it'll sit there at that droop for a while. And then all of a sudden it'll want to go again. Well, you want to get it before it goes that second time. And of course, this is all your trash. It's not usable. Um, um, just pitch it. You know, there's no sense in trying to flatten it back out or anything like that because you'll never get another good piece out of it. But in this frame, see, you could literally sit here and take this frame and you could put a couple other pieces around the edges of it. Yep. If so inclined and vacuum form three or four different things on here all at once. Or do the whole big 18 inch square piece and have three or four of these molds in there and, and, and do all of them at the same time. But Make a cow. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, the, the world's the... You know, how, how many molds do you want to make? Uh, we haven't tried that. We can make, make cows out of that stuff. Well, you know, years ago they did have a, uh, a model airplane that had blow molded fuselage on it. Cock, you don't have anything like that. No, it was a kit. And you actually had to glue the halves together and... Uh, it was a, they come in some different colors. The one I remember right off hand was a blue one. It was blue plastic. And you had a seam along the whole top and the bottom. You know, just like you would expect. Do you have any unthinned black? <clears throat> Probably, yeah. Right now, I'm just taking the original canopy that I had already cut for my airplane to fit. I just marked the outline, stuck it in there, marked the outline. It'll be just a little bit big because the, you know, I'm on the inside. This is real hard to see that. We hope you guys are enjoying the canopy series. Just kind of shows you if you're a modeler, you can make whatever you want. There's no. Are no secrets. And no preset thing that can't be made. This is all probably 90% sweat equity. And all this technology we're doing is probably 50, 60 years old. Oh, yeah. That's why I couldn't believe them guys at Boeing couldn't pull that Corton 229 canopy. They wasted two big, thick pieces of half inch thick Lexan, four by eight sheets. You know, Boeing, money's no object. Sure. They got a big giant autoclave there and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, they pulled it out with plot. They pulled that piece, no frame. You can watch it on YouTube. I've seen it. They pulled it out of that autoclave on top of that plug and then tried to pat it down with oven yeah, mitts. <laughs> oven mitts, and you're going to get all handprints in it and everything else. Believe me, if you've got a real good mold, if you got oily fingers and you, you grab your mold like that and it'll you leave your, your it'll show up right in your plastic. But there we go. There's, there's the mold, molded 
canopy. It's going to take a little bit of shaping around the edges, but um, like I said, I put the original in the inside of this, so this will be just a little bit big from what we need. Uh, but nothing but that a little piece of sandpaper won't cure. And there we sort of got semi-finished product. Uh, Gieske Nobler Canopy. Unobtainium. Yeah, unobtainium. You cannot get these puppies. Uh, but it, I don't do this production, you know, so uh, I'm not going to sit down and make a hundred of these things <laughs> uh, to go out there. But that's what we got. I don't feel that I can do it good enough to actually warrant. Uh, you know, selling these things or whatever. They've got little teeny imperfections in them. Um, yeah, but even the ones from SIG have little imperfections in them. Yeah, I'm just picky. Really picky. And I guess there might be a reason for it. I, I just, I feel I spend all that time actually building my airplane that I deserve to be pretty picky but that's that one and this one these are the two I think came out the best This one's got some spots in it that could probably be buffed out a little bit but you can't get rid of all those little pin Bubbles, they, they, they look like little bubbles in there. I don't know, they're imperfections, you know, some gassing out in the plastic from getting it too hot. So, you know, be careful on the heat. If you're trying to mold these things, too much heat, and you'll find out real quick. Um, I did one for my Takana a long time ago, and it took me about 10 tries before I got it. You know, my primer melted to my plastic. It had air bubbles, had folds in it, had all sorts of different things until I finally got the the knack of doing it and that was my first try. It, it was a huge canopy. Heck, it was a canopy that long, almost three inches wide and four inches tall and, you know, a foot long. So it was a big giant canopy and uh, I finally did get it. Uh, it came out really nice, uh, but sweat equity, what can I say? It's, pretty much it sweat equity so that's that about covers our canopy molding seminar uh, it's not beyond anybody's capabilities you know it just takes time to make a box once you got the box made you've got the box forever your your vacuum box so that can also double as a sanding box you know, you got a tw two by two foot uh, box with a perforated top. You hook your shop back up to it and sand over top of that box, and you got a, a dust collection box, a little sanding box. It worked sure you pretty get good. All the dust off before you mold the canopy. Yeah, yeah, I cleaned it all up, and you know, you could paint it and get it all nice and slick and everything looking nice. And uh, so, you know, there it could be a dual purpose deal, and then. Uh, don't make individual boxes. Don't make a little teeny box that's six inches square for or eight inches like this is just for this. Make a big box and then you just cover it with some paper over the holes that you're not going to be using and it'll only draw wherever you leave it open at. Uh. Yes, Humberto, it's a nobler. Or oh, Herbert. Delgado. Del Del Barito, Del Barreto. This is a Gieski Nobler. Yep. It's not a green box. It's a top flight Gieski Nobler, but scratch built. Yep. No ARF. Got a special wing in it. So the wing's the same numbers. It's just built different. Same, same setup as my Tucker. 
the wing foam leading edge. We're gonna do some big airplanes like that too. Yep, it's a good it's a good deal. You don't get the starved horse look. That's got us now. I'm just gonna clean my mess up. I'm gonna go upstairs and get a little bit of that dope in my paintbrush and touch my hinges up. And then we'll ink them lines and go upstairs and have to spray some clear. I have to find my, uh, what are you doing with that little jar? I'm getting ready to put some dope in it. All right, it's got oil and stuff in it. You want to wash it out real good. It had pimentos in it. So you can entertain them while I go upstairs for a minute. Container, I gotta get the paint. I don't know exactly where it's at up there. I don't think I got any down here. Okay guys, I'll be back in a second. John can entertain me while I'm gone. Yeah, I guess I entertain you while I'm running out to the garage with him for a second. I don't think the uh, microphone will pick up from here, but maybe. It might. We'll see. Probably not in the garage. Let's see here. You need some black paint. Yeah. Just a little I don't have any black. I could have sworn I had. I had some black. I got some black, but it's thin. I guess you can ink it and spray it with clear. Thinned. I had a, a pint of black. Well, I know I had some. I just thought it might have got put up. I'm just thinking. Well,
Okay, guys, I don't know if you could hear that. We were in the garage uh, for a few minutes. But I'm back now, and uh, we'll carry on. So what I did was I went upstairs, or went, yeah, went upstairs, and I got some of the Miss Ashley red unthinned for some spots in the hinges that uh, when I paint something, I put such little paint <coughs> on it that any of the sanding and buffing <laughs> kind of disrupts things. So I'm going to go around and touch up the spots today that need yeah. to be touched up. This airplane is basically done. I'm not, there's nothing more to do on this except for rub and touch up these little spots in the hinges area. I wanted to do my cowl line too with some black. We didn't have we don't have any black, so I want to ink it and clear it. Is this necessary? Probably not. Ah, oh, here we go. You got black? I had a little bit of it. That looks so much better with that cow line painted. Mm -hmm. It's gonna have some nice weather here in a few days. This is gonna get a test flight. I'll make sure to uh, document that. We'll see if it'll do the pattern on the first flight. only a classic. See, I wanted to go, I did the other side, and I got to go over that, and this, and clear it. Yeah. You got any thinner up here? The repair on my leading edge turned out nice, didn't it? You can't tell whatsoever. Yeah. That is the nice thing about dope. If there's a faux pas, bugaboo, snafu, whatever you want to call it, they're easily repaired. Let's see here. Is that black? It's, uh... Okay, what I'm going to fix now, 
and it's it's so minute that most guys wouldn't deal with it but I'm gonna deal with it if you look here on this cowl line you can see silver on top of that line. Well, it's supposed to be black, so we're going to take the cowl off and I'm going to paint the top of that rail black with a brush. And it'll probably end up coming off, but at least when it first goes out there, it'll look nice. I don't know if that lacquer thinner will eat this up or not. Oh, more than likely. Won't put very much in it. We're going to do spinners today, too. For six grams. You get to see the inside, how my can't my tank is plumbed and how it's held in too, so I'll show that. I have done it this way for many years, so I don't want to hear anybody say, well that won't work. <laughs> That's how I hold my tank in with two quarter inch squares. They're CA'd to the side and this is CA'd to the tank. And if you got to shim the tank, you just break them out, put the shim under it, put new sticks in it. But normally if you bench trim correctly and get this line here equal to or slightly lower than, you're going to be fine. The needle well. The needle valve, the spray bar, yeah. And that line I'm talking about is this line right here. Top of this I'm going to paint black so that it looks like the ink line continues down the way when it's on the airplane. And it, hand me that yellow tape. This is way overkill for most. You know, it's all on what you want to do, how you want it to look, or whatever. At least for the first time out, I like my airplanes to be wow, that looks cool. <laughs> Because they do take a beating through the season. Okay, where's the black? Oh, you got it.
And I'm just going to pull this right down here like so. When you load your brush, make sure you load it all the way to the heel. The heel is the closest, the closest part to the metal in the quill. And set that right down on the end. Just pull it like a rudder. The longer the bristles, the longer the line you can pull. You don't worry about getting it on the inside. All he's doing is shadowing. Just a matter of getting some black in there to shadow that cow joint. When I put this on, it'll probably be get glued to the to the other part. But if you just hit it with the palm of your hand, it'll knock it loose. Okay, let's see how it turned out. Oh, I can see that it didn't turn out very well. Oh, it turned out all right. Turned out good enough, I'm not going to worry about it. Must be pretty good then. Going by your typical standards. The next thing is to fix the ink lines where I've rubbed them off <laughs> again. I'll put the lid back on this dope. We don't get yelled at. Yeah, hopefully it won't be enough smell. Hand me the lid. Shouldn't be much more than her painting her fingernails. Yeah. That's what I always say. But what's that smell? <laughs> I'm painting my fingernails, honey. 
Don't suggest you doing a whole airplane in your basement with the furnace and the hot water heater and everything else, right? I mean, I can't You're in the attic. You're in a little bit of a distance between your water heater and you. You're upstairs at a two-story house. Yep, I open the windows and run the fan and... Well, that'll work pretty good. It sucks all the heat out of your house, but whatever. See that? Doesn't that look much better? Oh, yeah. Looks like that pinstripe's going on back through there. Why do we use crop shaft extensions? Set the motor back closer to the center of gravity. Plus you can have a nicer looking nose. This one has a half inch extension. My big airplanes have three quarter inch extensions because the motor is heavier. However, if you're setting the motor back, you have to build the airplane lighter or else it won't balance. And the heavier the airplane, the farther the center of gravity moves back and the more tail heavy it becomes. So here we are back into Galdini's roundhouse barbell effect. Anybody didn't think that that's true, find out. Keep painting. Remember, you get one quart of dope. That's it. Don't go back to the can if you run out of paint. I'd say for a big for a big plane, you probably could get away with a quart and a half. Seventy ounces. Yeah. <laughs> so we're saying 70 ounces. Where you at for weight there? Oh, I don't know right now. 70 ounces? <laughs> Not on a Gieski Nibbler, but... I don't know. It ain't losing any. I see you guys being proud of building a twister or a banshee at 50 ounces. Where it should be 25. <laughs> That's way too much. It shouldn't be over 40 no matter what you do to it. Twister, I've seen them at 25. Yeah, well... It's only a pukey profile. I heard that that Tucker got billed at 38. Which Tucker? That right there, Tucker Special. Oh, yeah. at 38 or 32, some astronomically low weight. From Ted Fancher? Yeah. Yeah, I never see that. He said he ballasted it with eight ounces. Uh... Well, it's possible, I suppose. Okay, uh, I need that plywood straight edge, the short one. Hanging with those straight edges. Where are they? In their normal spot. How come you guys use crop extensions? So they don't have to use tail weight. Or any other kind of weight anywhere else. 
my airplane's nose heavy still right now. And I sent away to Wuhan, China <laughs> <laughs> for the virus. And these came in. So we're gonna I'm gonna be modifying this today to get it to mount to there. We're gonna lose six grams. I don't know. I don't even know if that's worth it. Six grams is six grams. A lot of guys that would would not do that for six grams. I will when I get this cut. Repairing these lines is, is harder than it looks. being is you can hardly ever get it to go exactly over the top of each other. Nope, it'll almost always look like a double wide line. If you tilt that pin one way or another, it makes the wine line wider. Okay. 
from here, whatever happens is the way it's going to be. I'm, I'm basically calling it. Yeah, calling it abandoning the paint job. So I need clear on this right here. I didn't do any other inking. I need to fix this, but I don't really want to go through that group anymore. Seventy-six minutes, eight or ten watchers, eight thumbs up. Smash that like button, hit the share button, subscribe. Helps the channel. I don't know how them guys can get a million subscribers for nonsense. Yeah, a lot of people like nonsense. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to make this spinner fit. Microphone somewhere, almost right there. Okay. All right, I'm going to make this spinner fit somehow. <laughs> Good luck. Mm, back to way. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you very much, Mike. At least if I have the spinner done, I have an option if it's nose heavy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't, it's not going to look as nice as the aluminum spinner. Well, you could always paint it, except that the real one had, did have an aluminum spinner on it, but... I have the silver paint here. I already thought about that. So you have another option besides... The carbon fiber really wouldn't look that good, I don't think, on a classic airplane. They didn't have that kind of stuff back then. No, but you kind of have to worry about, you know, balance because it's going to be nose heavy. Well, I, yeah, that's why I'm getting at it about painting it, you know, not leaving it carbon. Too bad this spinner won't go on this back plate. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. Piece of bar stock aluminum. High quality. See, it's, uh, this spinner is just a little bit bigger. Yeah, they're metric. That they are. Dang, I keep seeing and seeing and seeing, and the yeah, son of a gun gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I can't use it. I can't use that back plate. Where is that? It sits back too far, right? Yeah, because it, see how this this thing is here? Yep. You can use it. You just have to make a washer. Have to make an aluminum back plate. <laughs> uh, we don't have any material outside here. 
Nope. I guess there's some at work. It's hard to cut it too. I don't have the means to really cut. I cut it on the bandsaw at work. Well, we're not going to make a spinner today because they don't fit. And I can't make this fit this because it's ever so slightly bigger. Fit. You gotta fork it on, but look. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Okay. Now you're so, back to the good stuff again. Yeah, we're back to the good stuff. Except this back plays a little heavier than the carbon. Yeah, there you went your six, six grams. grams. Let's see what the difference in weight is. I think they're black fiberglass. That's nine grams. That's eight grams. So for a gram, it's not worth doing. <sighs> I'm just shortening the gram. We're going to get a test flight this week or in the next week or so on this airplane. It's ready to go. We need to make up some 60 foot line. 60, 62 and 61 foot line. One gram difference. Better if it, I like the aluminum one better myself, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's gonna get his binoculars on. No. I'm gonna take off the good ones. Put on my work glasses. 
Ah, so you're going down there, Maggie. You don't want to see as much. Yep. Their prescription now get you. Now my glasses cost me four hundred and fifty or so almost five hundred bucks. He's censoring me. the finer of the two. Take a long look at something hot, does it? What are you doing? Buffing out scratch marks that should have been sanded out? Regardless of little teeny flaws in it. Better than the smoke canopy. Oh, much nicer than the smoke to canopy. Make sure you still got uh you got ten thumbs thumbs up from the walker, so that's a better average. I like that. All right. After an extra week worth of dinking around, all for a canopy, we're finally there and I can continue on with my build process as soon as I get the canopy on, blended in. And I even got an extra canopy that's good enough to put on. Out of the deal. Well, 
And I got one half of this done right. Damn. Needs to be sanded, wet sanded. There's no scratches there. Eh? Sanded it with 2000. You don't see lines around it? No, I just didn't get it all. You're getting there, but you can still see them. It took a lot of work to make one really, really shiny. You think you got it sanded enough to bear sand some more, just like a finish on your airplane. You're bearing down on it. That's it. Well, no, the polishing compound's supposed to be there. doesn't mean it won't get hot. I'm not making it hot enough to melt. Let's see here. Like a never ending process with rubbing and polishing. Ain't one thing, it's another. You're right, it is never ending. How come Tom Morris sold his business? Because Tom Morris is on his last leg. He had a heart attack, he almost died. I'll be making a formal announcement later tonight on Stunhanger. We're going to switch over the uh, the banners. Anything ordered from Stunhanger Hobby will still be delivered, so nobody panic. Tom is just like anybody else. That's starting to get up in age. You start having problems. Bless his heart. He's been a major asset, asset to this community, modelers. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't he still going to be doing some builds? He's going to do some builds. I think he'll still build some airplanes for you if you need one, but he's just not going to run the whole hobby shop show, which is just too much for him.
Tom became such a staple at all the contests and everything. Of Everywhere you went, it seemed like he was there with his peddling his wares. And I wonder if Russell's going to do that. Always had high quality supplies and equipment and services. It's going to be hard to duplicate. I see a spot there. I still need to get a buck. Right there. Just wish whoever takes it over here. It's got some big boots to fill. Oh, zip out lighter blood. Takes the glue right off your sanding bars. Have you seen a single edge razor blade laying around? Paint on his airplane. Perfect day to paint. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't checked the humidity. It does seem pretty Gotta nice out. That 2K clear on it. <laughs> yeah, I hope he did. Move the camera a bit so we. Oh, he wants to see the. That was TJ. Says, uh, TJ, we move the camera a bit so we aren't just watching, staring at a plane. What work are you doing and what could be demonstrating technique? How are you doing it? Well, I was buffing my spinner. I was putting a piece of sandpaper on a sanding bar. Yeah, that's pretty important. I'm going to be putting another one on another piece. So, I buffing the spinner on the wheel. And that's basically buffing the spinner on the wheel. <laughs> Well, these shows aren't exactly scripted. <laughs> I mean, technically, we come in here without a single clue as to what we're going to be doing, except working on the airplane. I just so happened to be molding the cowling and canopy, canopy and decided to Threw that in there at the last minute, and I actually molded an extra canopy that I really didn't need. But we got a spare. 
build another one down the line. For my nobler. Here's Berkey's. I think I'll give that nobler kid away that I bought. Is that a Geeski nobler or is that a, no, a, a top flight? No. Nope, green, green box? No. Nope. What the heck is it then? A nobler I've never seen before and it ain't quite the same. Is it a Gondi nobler? I don't know. From overseas? No. A Gandhi? Gondol nobler? No. They look different. It is different. Yeah. I hope the plans up, the tips are different. I mean, it's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. It's different span and the whole shebang. I think Joe Reinhardt built one of those at one point in time. I mean, it looks like it'll work okay. Look, it, you know, it, it resembles a nobler, but just slightly different. The fin and the rudder are different, and the yeah, there's a lot of differences on it. Numbers are really different. So we got the spinner up. I was going to go to the carbon fiber spinner, but the way that it works out, the back plate, the carbon back plate doesn't have the spacer that the Brodak back plate has so that it sits too close to the nose ring. Well, this is five grams and the other one's 10, the other back plate is 10 grams. Now you can squeeze the carbon spinner onto the aluminum back plate for a difference of one gram. Well, for one gram, I like the looks of the aluminum spinner better. But we'll, I'm sure I'll build something down the road that I'll use it on. After you make a metal back plate for it. Yeah. Still haven't figured out how you're gonna do that one, but yeah, no, <laughs> you no. know, guy. <laughs> yeah, I know, guy. <coughs> now let's redo our sanding blocks here and get good paper on them. Well, that's pretty good. It's gonna take some more polish. I mean, this polishing business. I got to do my muffler too, but. I just don't feel like that's a lot of work. <laughs> it ain't nothing to do but to do it. Yeah. It's a piece of glass right here. It's already got a piece of paper on it. 320. Got big old grind marks in it. Hey, the guy just made it for you. He didn't say he's going to polish it for you, too. <laughs> You got to do some kind of sweat equity in it. <laughs> you better change out your batteries. Yeah. The transmitters, we got an hour and three. We'll, we'll go an hour and a half again. So we got, let's see, 90 minutes. That's an hour and a half, right? 120. We'll go 20. 15 minutes more for two hours, I guess. Unless you guys want to see us work all day long till lunchtime or whatever. So we're gonna take we're gonna take a consensus here. Do you guys want us to keep streaming? Because basically what we're doing here is just tinkering in the shop. So we'll you know be happy to keep streaming or whatever. What is this? Did the internet go down for a minute? No, it's uh... He's taking pictures? No, it's uh... Different effects. Ooh! Ooh yeah, bubbles! Keep streaming. <laughs> we got bubbles today. We got Ooh. Now, check this out, John. We got psychedelic. Tiny, tiny bubbles. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Let's see, dream. Ooh. Reminds me of my younger years. Glamour. Where's, eight. where's the black lights and the strobe lights? There's and... the eight millimeter. Look, it's even got the 
the little. You ever done have boom, ticky, 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 boom, ticky. document? <laughs> I'm just going through this and uh, test. Ooh, look at this. It's see. Ooh, man, that's the coolest. Wow, yeah, that looks like real oldie. Hey. There you go. Hey, I, I'm glad I found Pencil this. Pencil outline. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. Is that just coming up on you, or is that actually going out there for everybody to see? No, that's going see? out for everybody to see. All right, we're back. I'm quit playing. <laughs> oh, hey, Kim. Come see me die. Everybody in Curry is named Kim, aren't they? Jeff. Okay, let's change out your batteries. They want us to keep streaming, so. Are you done with the paint? All right. I put, I put it up, I didn't know. Yeah, I'm done. I'm trying to get rid of some of my mess. I want to really start I guess I could start mounting this tailing on there now. Gluing her on there. I wonder if I can get by without painting that on the inside. No. Doesn't come up that high. Doesn't, no. Well, I've done it before. You'll be sorry. Well, damn, why didn't I listen to that? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Backwards, that's why. Well, hell, that makes a big difference in there. This is made in Australia, that's why it's 500 bucks. Hey, Beats, Bells, Bangles, Incense, and Crash Pads. I'm giving this microphone a test. Happy Hare Krishna. Yep, it's working. Okay, you're on. I'm going to have to get me another road link wireless because this tethered business is just ridiculous. Oh, so true. True. We need to do something about batteries. Well, I got them big, bigger batteries. I put on my good glasses again so I can see what I'm doing. My work glasses are lined by focals and they kind of <laughs> interfere with your vision. Yeah. John is fitting his canopy now and he's going to, he better paint the inside of it and then mount it. I'm going to, but I'm, 
got a different canopy. This one I, I'm gonna set back aside. The one you like, you're gonna set back aside? Well, it's actually the first one that I did, or the second one. Not the one you did today. I cut it down a little bit too much is what it amounts to. You know, what I think is just a little bit too much. And then you're only talking the pencil line. I got a little groove all the way around this thing. It's got to sit down in. And I got to sort of whittle it down to that groove ever okay. since. So. You got to piddle it down? <laughs> yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Put it on, take it off. Put it on, take it off. A thousand times. That doesn't look good when it's done. John is going to be at Cleveland, yes. And he'll probably be at Brodak, yes. Says, uh, I've seen Sparky at plenty of contests, but I haven't seen John. John, do you go to Cleveland, contest or Brodak? Been to all of them. Yeah. Been to almost every single Brodak contest that there was. Minus a couple when I was really sick, but uh, missed a couple years. Until John met me, he's been incognito. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very out and out guy. Brodeck, I was, mostly when I was first going to Brodeck, I was only going on Friday and Saturday, or Saturday and Sunday, whatever Pampa days. I didn't go there for class, uh, the whole week. I just couldn't swing it. Oh yeah, yeah. He'll be with me. Jerry Hop. We all, Jerry Hop, John, and I, we all hang together. Dating buzzing buzzards. Dating old buzzards. I was a Lafayette Escadrille, well, I still am a Lafayette Escadrille member, really, because I live in St. Louis, but because I over here a lot of the time, I also joined the, the buzzing buzzards because they've given me a key to the field. But you don't need the key anymore because they tore the fence down. Mm -hmm. yeah, the tornado come through, annihilated everything. But I figure for twenty-five dollars a year to have a place to fly, that's pretty damn cheap. I'll whittle this down until it's too small. Yeah, I'm going to make another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been known to do stupid stuff like that. There's a guy in the club that makes fuel. He, he owes me 10 gallons, so that'll be enough to last me this year. Probably next yeah, year. Yeah, it's two years. I think I still got a couple gallons left in my car. This would be nice if you could see. I see what it is right there. It needs to, needs to be cut right there. Well, that's part of it. and That's not all of it. I keep whittling away at a little bit at a time because I really can't see how much I'm cutting off. The glare I'm going to reach a point here where I'm going to have to quit. Quit pedaling? Yep. And start sanding it finer. Yeah. I'm almost pedaling away. With that glare, I can't, I really, I'm serious. I cannot see how much of that plastic that I'm catching. I very well easily go up in there a quarter inch. A little bit. 
that right there on that little end. In order to make a nice airplane, you just have it just takes time. It just cut, fit. If it don't fit, make a new one. There's a guy bitching about painting with dope online there the other day. Takes too long. Really not. <laughs> dope is the easiest medium to, to use. Now you can sit here and you can put your base coat, you can put all three coats on in a day if it's 60 degrees out, 55 degrees out. I could do it all the time in the garage, in the middle of winter time. Go out there, put a coat on, let it dry a couple hours, go back out, sand it a little bit, put another coat on, wait a couple hours, and then one day I've got my three base coats on. Let it dry overnight, sand it again, come through, spray your primer or your base coat color, you know, you're done. The very, that afternoon, if you want to, you can go back and tape it off and put your stripes or whatever on. Uh, you don't have to wait weeks for it to dry. Now, when it comes time to polish it out, it helps if it's nice and dry. Uh, let the paint get a little harder. You know, all your work is you can sit there and you can buff like Sparky's airplane is still pretty green. It's two weeks old. But it's still a little on the green side. Yeah, it'll be but, shinier uh, come it, summer. Yeah, he'll, he's going to go through that more than one more time. I think that's about got her there, bud. I think that's about My her. airplane will still get boned out with 5,000 grit sandpaper. Yep. Put it on, take it off. Put it on, take it off. <laughs> Put it on, take it off. Right now, all I'm doing is I'm beveling this edge just a little bit, all the way around it. Are you going to stipple it or sand it to, to attach it? Uh, well, if you sand it, it doesn't help to paint it, you know? So I'll probably stipple it. It's going to get tissue paper and super fill, on there anyway. super fill and all that stuff on it, feather it all in. Need another ounce. Is what it is. Seventy ounces. I'd really like an airplane that weighed 40, 38 ounces, but it ain't gonna happen because it didn't start with the first piece of wood. You start off with five pound wood, you're gonna get what you get. How much is your total finish on this, do you think? Total finish? Six ounces. So far? No, complete. I don't even have my first quart of thin dope used. I still got that much in that well, you don't, bottle. Don't use it if you don't need well, it. I'm, I know, that's what I mean. I, I mean, for a six ounce finish, you're using two quarts of clear. And if I don't use that, I still got my quart for the top coat. I still a thin clear, and I, I I still got about a I don't know half an inch that, in the bottom of the first that thin clear. Was that the quart that I mixed up? Yeah, and that's not a whole quart because that's in one of those uh, metric yeah. jars. Yeah, you you can go a little bit more. So yeah. all I got yet to do on this thing is I've I've got my this is my blocker coat. I'm up through my blocker coat or my primer basically. 
and it'll get one sanding and then it'll get painted one coat of white and then minimal colors. And then six gallons of clear. No, I got my one little bottle of clear and I don't intend to use that, but I'll tell you what, that, that bottle, that jar, I should say jar, is only two and a half coats. That's all you're gonna get out of that. That's Well, you're gonna get enough out of it. You saw what I got out of mine. I had to use a little bit more, but... You know, you can add as much thinner as you want. I could get four coats, six coats out of it if I want. Just keep adding thinner to it, but... You gotta watch out at first if you're spraying over colors and ink lines. You don't want too much thinner in it right then at first. You melt all that stuff. I was asked, what pound wood do I use on airplanes? I'd love to use three pound wood, but there is none. Most of it's four to six pound, so which ends up five pound now because that's what we can get. Yeah. That's... But you want to use your wood wisely. You don't want to use three pound wood for ribs because it just won't hold up. I'm, I'm not sure three pound wood is even feasible in an airplane, but four pound wood for uh, ribs. Uh, I use all 332nd wood. I think you use 16th. This is all 16th on this airplane. Every bit of it. 16th inch wood. Fuselage sides. I take that back. I think I used a piece of uh, 332nds for a doubler up here on a fuselage side. It goes back to about the high point of the wing. Uh, but I made all new bulkheads, you know, they're all, the bulkheads are all 332nds. No, wait a minute, no, they're all 16th too. Except I made them in squares, so they're sticks with the grain running. Then you built the, a Warren Trust bridge inside there. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a Warren Trust deal going in there, a little bit, just on the top and bottom. Doesn't have it on the sides. The next airplane you build, uh, don't cut these holes. Yeah, I cut all the lightning holes out in the back of the fuselage sides, and I sort of regret it because it makes it really, this airplane, now taken for granted, it's not the lightest in the world. It's going to be about 44 ounces. But it is hard to handle when you're building it. it you get to where... <laughs> You handle it and just under its own weight you're breaking stuff on it and it's really a handful and up until up until you get the covering on it and, and you get some tissue on there then it starts getting a little bit of strength to it because you know that's where all the strength is anyway you know the, the rounded edges and covering but I'll be happy. I mean, if I hit 44, that that's fine. I really don't want to go over 44. Sparky didn't want to go over 42. He's 42 and a half. Uh, I mean, we would rather have it 38. <laughs> Either one of these airplanes. They're both comparable in size. Uh, they're real close to being pretty identical. And I'm still going to be an ounce, a couple ounces heavier than him. But I think he had a little better, better selection of wood than I did when he started. Because <clears throat> I can tell you one thing. I hollowed everything there is to hollow out on this dang thing. And if, if it ain't hollowed, it wasn't touched. 42. Is that 36? Yeah, you get a little bit of fuel in it from running it the first time that stays in there and you get a couple coats of wax on it, you're at 43 ounces. Of course, I, I got that extra tip weight out there, which I don't know that I'll need. But it's better to have it in there for the first flight.
are you trying to do there? I'm trying to put a hole in something. Well, you're, you you've got your lines too that run to your handle that you've got to sort of. Yeah, but they're fifteen thousand sixty foot. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They still got some weight. It's not just your lead outs. Well, it'll be close. What's this in there for? To remind me that I need to put clear on that. Okay. I need to do is see finish fitting this. I have no idea. I don't have a clock down here. Oh man. Something just doesn't feel right. Let me see this. Give me that. You know what doesn't feel right? If you need to cut some more away here. Cutting this canopy down anymore is not going to get that out of there. You don't have enough shaved off there. You do on this side, but not on this side. And the paint's probably build up in there. I got to get my uh, my doohickey out, my easel. Get this where I can work on it on its side. Trade me, trade me spots. Man, I can see right through that wing. <laughs> and I can. Uh, ain't got no paint on that. <laughs> I wonder if we can still see through mine. Put all that gold on there. Not really. Here, look. See if we can see through it. Mm, pretty opaque. Yeah. Too much. Well, you had to get the gold on there to... Too much paint. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been an ounce lighter. TJ was asking about the techniques. The technique John's using is called elbow grease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
Not the patience. Really need a little bit heavier piece of sandpaper than that. Yeah, I don't want to use. Too awful heavy. So Stingray, who exactly are you? So I know who you are when I see it Brodax or wherever. Yeah, who are you, Stingray? You're asking about us. I've been around for quite a while. I'm asking about how long I've been around. There you go, and I'll try it. I have to take that off too. No, nah, that's all. That's even way down too much there. If you gotta fill it back up with super fill, you're gonna have to take a little bit off the canopy, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, that's easier said than done. You know, here, I'll do it. Yeah. Huh? That's all right, I'll do it. If I could only see. I gotta make sure I don't trim too much off one side and make the canopy sit on there lopsided. You just hold your head crooked. <laughs> yeah. You look at it from the front and everything and lean it over there. I've had many a plane that was like that. You know what's going to happen, right? What? You're going to come a point where that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm already there. I'm already there. i got to straighten that line out there just a little bit. Keep trimming and trimming and trimming, and then before you know it, yep, it's too small. Cut it five times, still too short. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have to just mold it in. Oh uh, yeah. Well done. sell a needle and tip for a wide spray. Really? 
by the hundred bucks. I'm gonna buy one. Well, you know what we got there. You got like a number five in there right now. I need a number seven. Seven with the diffuser spray, and it looks just like a regular paint gun. It's not the magnetic tip. No. You gotta change the, the nozzle, the needle, and the tip. Hmm. And I, I'll buy another one. Oh, I'll buy it. Oh, this is gonna have to be repainted black now, too. You got the black paint down here. Just smooth it on there. Freaking door. I'm sure that'll work out of there. Eh, gotta let the tank wear in once it gets a little fuel on it. Put some on the too. Yeah, that'd make it better, more gooder. Gooder. That more gooder. What do you do about that? Hey, boy. Be easy with my airplane. It'll all be good in the end. Mm -hmm. It'll all be good in the end. Yours was like that before. What? Yours was like that before. <clears throat> I already got a solution to the problem. Don't worry about it. Well, I think I'm about done messing. All I'm doing is taking a chance of dinging her up more and more and more. The more hand look, the more dense it gets. You'll have it all dented up before it's even painted. <laughs> yep. I think you know that one for a fact. Poke any holes in the wing yet? Nope, I haven't done that yet. It'll happen. I know, I did twice on mine.
I gotta tape that off and mark where I need to paint it at. Paint that black in that. did I use on that? I don't think I used this Brudak black because that's flat black. I think I used this here Krylon Fusion. take a couple coats. I taped that off and I sprayed that the first time. But it's really going to be underneath Kind of cow or campy. Your neighbor? Oh, that was my original neighbor that I built. No, only other thing I got over here now is Ringmaster. That airplane, I built that airplane. Now that box come at 40 ounces. With all, I used every piece of wood out of the kit. Oh, this is Chris. <clears throat> Chris who? John, are you going to fly expert or intermediate this year, or advanced this year? Well, I got bumped up to expert, actually. Okay, so John's going to be on the low end of the totem pole. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be... <clears throat> Chris who? Chris Brett, he comes with his wife, young girl. Okay, yeah, I think I know him. A couple more coats on that. I need a PA-75 is what I need. <laughs> well, I 
know where one's sitting. I know where one's sitting too. I know where a couple of them sitting. There's probably a lot more than that sitting in drawers somewhere. Nobody wants to give up. It is what it is. But I intend to use it, not leave it sit. When you got two or three airplanes that's made for that, it's pretty hard not to have to. I don't know what I could do. I could, I guess I could rework the front end of them, take those aluminum plates that I got in there out and make wider aluminum plates and bolt some other motor, a road jet or whatever in there. I think road jet will drill your motor for peace. I don't know that they're wide enough. Yeah, I think they're a narrower motor. I, I really don't know for a fact, so Whatever I can't it is, we can speculate that. There's a way to fix it. Because I did put aluminum pads in there with screws on each end of it, you know, so with, I can, I can deal with that. I have to put brass inserts in the front and rear because I really, my motor mount pads aren't, bolted into blind nuts. They're just threaded maple. Just enough to hold that pad in place. Then the you know the motor mounts drilled all the way through for the motor. Another five hundred bucks. Yeah. That it is. If I could get these damn things around here K77 need to send them back I need to put some bench time on it I think hey, these things I bought these for my PA ships they're supposed to be the same PA75 and they are motor mount wise and everything. I haven't had enough run time on them to tell if they run anywhere near what a PA75 does. So when it, when it warms up a little bit, take put it on the motor mount back there and run a gallon of fuel to it. Yeah. I got two of them to do. That could be all that's wrong with it. There's no run time on it. I've got at least a gallon through it already. Everybody's talking, well, you got to do is run a couple tanks of gas through it and you're good to go. They sent new back plates to me for the motor and the, the damn rod ate up the new back plates. I think there's inherently something wrong in them. <clears throat> what do they do for lunch? I don't know. Well, guys, I think we're we'll going to end the screen till after lunch. We've been on an hour and 50 minutes, or no, 150 minutes. That's uh, two and a half hours. So appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, share. We might may come back after lunch. So till I see you again, fair winds, tight lines. See ya.